God bless you, people of God. <clears throat> let me let some people know I'm on in the name of Jesus. Share this as many times as you can. Invite somebody, invite somebody. God bless you, kingdom family. Let's speak on some kingdom table talk in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Speak to us, Lord. I want to tie to this altars and atmospheres. Altars and atmospheres. In the name of Jesus, let someone know I'm on altars and atmospheres. Thank you, Father. I bless you tonight as you're coming in the live, um, as you're coming in the invite. Let the Spirit of God touch you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm just inviting people on my list. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm just going down the list. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to give everyone a fair chance. Let them know I'm going to speak tonight. <clears throat> I don't know if you see my title there, Altars and Atmospheres. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we prepare this atmosphere today. As you're opening the screen, there's an atmosphere. Listen, there's an atmosphere being prepared in your home in the name of Jesus. There's, at there's atmospheres being prepared in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Share this as many times as you can. Let someone know I'm on. Email this. Um, uh, WhatsApp this. I really want to speak to you tonight about the atmospheres. Amen. Amen. Let's get the views up as I come into your home. There's atmospheres that are being changed. As I come into your home, there's atmospheres that are being changed. Thank you, Lord. God is doing something to the atmosphere. Thank you, Lord. Atmospheres are being changed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, brother. Brother Andy, Alma, Jackie, bless you. This message is kind of a continuation of what we spoke about yesterday, last night. Uh, but I want to give everyone a chance to hear it and, you know, regurgitate it. Amen. Thank you. Share it, share it, share it on your page. Listen, I challenge you to share this to five people. Share this to five people on your feed. You know, share it. You go to your messages and you can share it. Share it in the name of Jesus. Share it to at least five people. Five is the number of grace. Share this to five people. Because I'm about to uh, go in the next few seconds, the next minute, in the name of Jesus. Welcome, Angel. Welcome, Cynthia from New York. God bless you. Welcome, daughter Alma. Welcome, Brenda from Orlando. Welcome, Jackie from the West Coast. God bless you. Daughter Deaconess Maria, thank you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. God has some prepared for us today. And this is going to benefit everybody. I believe this will revolutionize and transform people. Come on, let's share this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God's about to do something. In our lives, um, so let the Spirit of God move. Thank you, Lord. Imagine how you guys are ready. You guys are ready. Like a pro in just I'm getting my minutes. instruments ready. Listen, I know that sounds crazy, but so I we're going to get ready to go. Amen. Okay. I'm launching. I'm launching. I'm launching. Let them catch me on the rewind. You can fast forward it to, uh, uh, for those of you catching me to a, a minute or two. A bold one. Tatu moon shit Fire, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
God bless you. God bless you, people of God. God bless you, Melanie. God bless you. So I want to really quickly open up today in the name of Jesus. I want to speak about a little bit what we spoke about yesterday. If you can hear me, let me know you can hear me. Let me know you can hear me. Amen. If you can hear me, say, God bless you, Pastor. I hear you. God bless you, Pastor. I hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We read in, and I spoke about this yesterday really quick, uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. We talk about the greater lights. But there was a light, watch this, to govern the day. Listen to me. But there was also a lesser light to govern the night. Are you with me? That means there were two governments. There was a lesser light to govern the, day, uh, the night and a greater light to govern the day. And the ruler, watch this, when you talk about governments and rulers, you're talking about thrones. Listen to me. You're talking about governmental systems. You're talking about authorities that are governing the firmament. The, or the firmament, the firmament that are governing the firmament is outer space, the outer atmosphere, the tri, the, 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 you call it, um, the tritosphere, the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. So now you have rulers and thrones. Watch this in the spiritual realm. Listen, Ephesians chapter six. We read this yesterday. I don't want to be long on it, but Ephesians chapter six, you are not wrestling flesh or blood. What I'm telling you is you're wrestling atmospheres. He says you're wrestling the rulers, the governments, the powers, the authorities. From the outer realm, from the second heaven, in the name of Jesus. If I'm coming in clear, say, God bless you. You're wrestling authorities. You're wrestling thrones from the firmament area. So today we're going to address atmospheres. We're going to address the firmament in the name of Jesus. Right now, so we're, we're, we're talking about galactic heavenly rulers. Come on, somebody. We're talking about dominion holders. I want to get aggressive tonight. We're talking about governmental systems. We're talking about demonic networks. Come on, somebody. Share this as many times as you can. Listen, share this with five people. And when you go share, you click on your share to five people that need to hear this. Post this, post this. This is going to bless someone's life. I'm going to give you another scripture. Job chapter 28 verse 7. If you want to post it, you can. Job chapter 28 verse 7. You got that? Job chapter 28 verse 7. Watch this. When you read Job chapter 28 verse 7, I want to slow down. It says, and these treasures... In, in some in some versions says in these outer realms no bird or prey can see no falcons have observed I'm speaking about realms I'm speaking about atmospheres I'm speaking about realms and authorities and thrones that neither bird nor falcon nor eagle have seen these are outer dimension Job was speaking about watch this Genesis chapter one verse twenty six I'm not going to read the whole scripture. Follow me, follow me. Write notes if you're writing notes. I'm going to try to slow down, but I'm going to breeze through it. This kind of refresher. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God bless you. Interact with me. God bless you. Jacqueline Maldonado. Blessings of God. Watch this. It speaks about that man had dominion over the fish, over the birds, over the atmosphere. When God called man to govern, he called man to govern atmospheres. Watch this. He even said the airwaves, the bird of the airs, flying things. So watch this. Man had the government. Of heaven, earth, and underneath the earth, right? Because the word of God in, in Genesis chapter 20, 1, 26, Genesis 1, 26 speaks about the governmental domination and dominion of man. Remember, you read the book of Ezekiel, you read the book of Isaiah, watch this, you read the major prophets, and it speaks about that Lucifer wanted to be like God. He wanted to exalt himself and put himself equal to God. As soon as he thought that, watch this, watch this, Lucifer tried to change the atmosphere of heaven. Lucifer tried to bring chaos in heaven. God said, Lucifer, I know I created you, but you cannot affect my atmosphere. And Lucifer had to be, Jesus says, I saw him fall as lightning. Lucifer had to be cast down of heaven because Lucifer was trying to tamper with the heavenly atmosphere. Are you with me? Come on, somebody. Write down, don't let anyone tamper with your atmosphere. you got to protect your atmosphere. If you get anything from this message, you got to protect your atmospheres. I taught yesterday that people, persons, objects, things carry atmospheres. The reason a person, when, when, when you talk about that Satan, um, is, if people are an assignment in your life and, and Satan is coming to attack your life, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're bringing certain atmospheres to rearrange your atmosphere. 
people and things, organizations, businesses, churches, um, their corporate atmospheres, there's individual atmospheres in the name of Jesus. So watch this. Since Lucifer couldn't be like Elohim, he couldn't be like God. He saw the dominion that was imparted to man. Are you with me? He saw that God gave Adam all this dominion. He said, okay, I can't be like God, but I'm going to attack the dominion. I'm going to attack the atmosphere, the airwaves that Adam has control of. Are you with me? You see, when, when Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, when, when man was giving his governmental um, instruction, Lucifer was hearing. Lucifer said, I want to get the dominance. I want to get the dominion that Adam has. So watch this. So the rulers, so Adam was able to control the rulers. So the ruler is ruling the rulers. I'm going to repeat that. That means before even, even Adam stepped on the scene, listen to me, there were power, principalities, dominions, thrones, galactical, there were thrones. So the enemy, those are, those are angelic. So the enemy imitates carbon copy what heaven is doing. So when God gave Adam dominion, he also gave Adam dominion over thrones. He gave Adam dominion of, of, over other Elohims that were created. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to talk about the other Elohims. When even God said, let us create man, we think he's just talking about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's all we learned. But God had created other Elohims. He had created a clergy, kind of like a congress. He created elders, a clergy, Elohims that created the earth, that created the, the, the galaxies. I'm not going to get there today in the name of Jesus. I don't got time for that. So watch this. I'm going to really quickly read this scripture. I'm going to release and go. You guys got to stay with me. Pay attention. I, I drank my coffee, so I'm a little bit uh, 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 going, but you got to stay with me, okay? We're talking about atmospheres and thrones, atmospheres and altars. Pay attention. This will change your life. In the next 24 hours, after hearing this message, you're not going to remain the same. You will not remain the same. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2. Write this if you're taking notes. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Ephesians 2, 2. Get it? 22. Come on, someone. Something is happening with the 22. Listen, share this with five of your friends. Share this on your post. If you can't share it with one of your friends, somebody got to hear this in the name of Jesus. So watch this. Ephesians 2.2. 2. It says, it says, which, which you once walked following the course of this world. Right? Following, watch this, the prince, the god of the, the prince of the air. Hmm? Following the prince of the air, comma, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Okay, so we understand this. That Lucifer now, when he took the dominion from Adam, he now started ruling the airwaves, the ethers, the atmospheres. Are you with me? Come on, share this. So Adam had rulership over the, over the airwaves, over the thrones, over the governments. Adam had dominion over the Elohims that were ruling. The Elohims represent the principalities. I'm not going to go there. But there were also Elohims created to govern the earth. Adam had authority over them. When Satan realized the authority that Adam had, he said, I got to take it away from this joker. I got to apprehend what he has got. So all of a sudden, watch this. When you look at Ephesians 2, to separate prince, right? the prince of the power, and separate power. So you got the prince of the power, prince and power, right? You go back to Genesis, it sounds familiar. The authority that God was giving Adam, listen to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me, the authority that God gave Adam in Genesis 1.26, okay? Now, in Ephesians 2.2, 2, the, the Lucifer, the enemy, the Diablos, huh? Um, uh, the, the, the one that the angel, uh, the, the, the one that is an angel of, uh, appears like the angel of light. Hmm? The devil himself has now the characteristic, okay, watch me, that was given, that was given to Adam. Hmm? Because, why, why? The enemy understands. Stay with me now, stay with me now. He that controls the air, the ethers, the atmosphere, controls civilization. He that controls the atmosphere of the airs controls generations. Why do you think the Nephilim appeared on the earth immediately? Giants came on the earth because the influential system now became the prince of darkness ruling atmospheres. Okay. So, when you deal with people, 
you don't hate the person. I know we say we hate the spirit, but I'm going to go a little, I'm going to speak about spiritual and deliverance, but I want to speak about delivering your atmosphere today. Write that down with me. Delivering atmospheres. I know we talk about individual deliverance because I want to get, I don't believe the church has addressed atmosphere deliverance. And, and, and listen, <laughs> okay, something's coming. Something's coming. Yeah, yeah, atmosphere deliverance. When you see that book coming out, okay, okay. I know we're talking about deliverance individuals. I'm going to get there, but I'm talking about atmosphere deliverance. And I'm going to tell you why atmosphere deliverance is even, it's equal or even maybe a little more important than individual deliverance. Are you with me? Write this down. Come on, share this five times. Those of you, uh, we're going to go into the stratosphere today, into the atmospheres. Watch this. The person, the prince that controls the atmospheres and the airwaves, okay, listen to me, controls the urges of man. Mm. Why do you think Sodom and Gomorrah? They were controlled by the prince of darkness, the prince of the air. Whatever controls your atmosphere controls your sensuality, controls your urges, controls your addictions. Yeah, I know it's the human body, but there are certain atmospheres. I said this just in the prayer line. When you go to different regions, there are certain regions that have an atmosphere of violence, atmosphere of sexuality. They have atmospheres of stealing, atmospheres of gang, atmospheres of drugs. I, I said yesterday, you have to investigate the atmosphere of a region. Watch, I know people that went on vacations and trips and left Christianity because they came back with the atmosphere of the vacation they came from. It was a party vacation, a liberal vacation. They got lit, they got drunk, they smoked their weed. They came back with that atmosphere and never returned to church again because they brought the atmosphere that they carried back. Are you with me? Robo Somebody. So watch this. The human mind, the human brain, the human brain, is controlled by the mind. Follow me. The human mind is controlled by the airwaves. Spiritual. Because remember, the breath of God, the rock, is the breath, the air of God. That means Satan has also a breath. And he and he breathes on the atmosphere. He breathes on the earth. So watch this. These the, the breath of Satan breathes demonic activity. Which the demonic activity from the air, from the atmosphere, it controls your mind. Follow me. Your mind controls your brain cells, the neurological levels, your frontal lobe, your communication. It gets into the bloodstream. It gets downloaded into the blood, into the veins. All of a sudden, now you embody the atmosphere. Okay, follow me now. So your mind, your imagination is governed by an atmosphere. Your imagination is governed. You'd be like, man, how did I think that? And you know, even as Christians, you know you're not possessed by a demon. But you, you thought that thought, you're like, man, well, hold on, what's going on here? Because that was an assignment from the atmosphere. Yes. Satan, remember, Satan wants to replicate. So there's a breath of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Then there's a satanic breath, right? I'm, I'm getting deep, I'm getting deep. Ah, I know you haven't heard about the satanic breath. Come on, somebody. So watch this. We become vulnerable when we're not in Christ, or we're not, or we're not filled with, or we're not walking in the Spirit. I always taught you can be full of the Spirit but not walking in the Spirit. When you can be full of the Spirit but not walk in the Spirit, your mind is vulnerable and exposed to the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one, good one, woman of God. Iha del Rey. Good one. Yes. Even you ever got when you're praying or reading, all of a sudden you get the biggest attack. Watch when. Say, when Jesus got tempted in Matthew 4, yes, it was Satan. And I know some people say, well, it was Satan talking to his, just his mind and it, Satan didn't really appear. But I will tell you what, it was the airwaves that were communicating with Jesus in the desert for four days and 40 nights. It was an atmosphere that were controlled. Okay, so watch this. Your house carries a certain atmosphere. You carry a certain atmosphere. Your children carries a certain atmosphere. Your boss at work carries a certain atmosphere. Your organization carries a certain atmosphere, right? That's why it says, that's why it says, since since the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who refuse to accept the glorious gospel of Christ. Come on, share this. Share this. So watch this. The God of this world, I know we talk about possession and oppression, but those that are even walking in the spirit, there's a worldly influence, right? There's a worldly influence. There's a worldly manipulation, right? So the airwaves control our subconscious. The Sunadesi is in the Greek. It controls our conscience levels. It contr then from, from controlling our conscience in our memories. 
Because all of the, even memories and things, yeah, they're spiritual. Listen, I'm not getting off the of spiritual. I'm just saying that every atmosphere hosts demonic spirits or godly spirits. That's why you got to tap into an atmosphere of glory. Come on. To atmosphere to atmosphere of glory. Okay. So every every environment. So when when so when Jesus, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down to you. When Jesus was going to go to Legion on the other side, right? Before he met Legion, that was anywhere from three to 6,000 demons in Legion. And all of a sudden, while he was in the waters, he had to silence the wind and he had to silence the air. Because the atmosphere was recognizing Jesus was coming. Right? The atmosphere was recognized. The, it was a collision of atmospheres. So the legion, the demons, rec- even though that Jesus was in face to face, they recognized Jesus from miles and miles away because they recognized the atmosphere that Jesus was carrying that was coming on them. That's why you call it Zoe life. Yes, the frequency of the bre- of the waves, where frequencies, where 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 wavelengths in the atmosphere. Are you there? So. If we're going to talk about clearing out atmospheres, deliverance in the atmosphere, right? If you look at, if you look at Lucifer, the devil coming down uh, as lightning from heaven or being cast down, being slung down, being punched down, God was making sure the atmosphere, the, the heavenly atmosphere wasn't contaminated, right? We're going to see another atmosphere change. Noah, the Ark of Noah. When the flood happened, the land was filled with, with, um, the land was filled with the Nephilim, with the giants. God, watch this, in the book of Genesis, had to cleanse the global atmosphere. Come on, somebody. There had to be a global atmosphere change, which caused climate change, which then you get the ice age there. You can put the ice age there. There was a global, there was an atmosphere adjustment. Tell somebody, it's time for an atmosphere adjustment. God had to get rid of the Nephilim spirit in the atmosphere. Are you with me? So watch this. When you say someone gets transformed, their mind gets transformed. Okay, let me, let me, let me, I'm coming in clear. Let me break this down. Okay, so the atmosphere, it downloads something to your blood. It downloads things to your mind. So when, it's an encryption. It's an encryption. Even the mark of the beast, 666, is an encryption from the atmosphere. It's, it's, it's an atmosphere encryption. It's a writing on the mind. So, that's why, that's why this mark of the beast 666 is people are saying, Oh my God, the mark of the beast. A lot of people are already marked with the mark of the beast in their subconscious level. The mark is just a man. The mark of the beast is just a physical manifestation that will come on earth by the one world government, by the ecumenical movement. Come on, I said ecumenical movement. Those that are saying, Oh, it's only one God, Buddha, everyone, Hinduism. No, it's not. And I'm not going to go there tonight. It's not kumbaya. It's not uh, heal the world, make it a better place all the time. Uh, and we're just we're just singing we're just singing kumbaya, and holding hands with with Catholics and Muslims. No, it doesn't work like that. The, that's called the ecumenical movement. Um, but through the ecumenical movement, there will be a one world government, one world system, one world economy, one world government, one world religion uh, that will manifest the six six six. But now the sons of Satan, sons of Sceva, sons of, of Satan, sons of Cain, they have the mark. Consciously on them. That means those that are going to hell are marked by the atmosphere. 666. Come on, share this with five people. Somebody got to hear this. Share this with five people on your page, right? So I'm going I'm to I'm give you a, I'm going to kind of deviate a little bit. You, you ever had, a, and especially people that work in correctional facilities or law enforcement, you, you ever seen a husband or wife have a bad day at work? It's happened to me. Hello, I'm, I've been a victim to it. And when they have a bad day at work, the atmosphere that's at work, they bring it to the home. And it's like, what happened to little Bubba? What happened to little Pookie? How she's so upset? Because they brought the atmosphere from what happened at work. Now they're bringing it to the home. Okay? So sometimes even when you get into your house, sometimes you got to even pray here. And say, I bind every day. I, I won't bring that to my home. I won't bring that to my family. Come on, somebody. So watch this. God gives you salvation for grace. We know that. Come on, somebody say, I'm saved by the blood. I'm saved by Cal- Calvary. I'm saved by what he did in Golgotha. I'm saved by what he did in the Mount of Skulls. Watch this. But even though you're saved, your mind needs to be redeemed. I'm going to repeat that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get into temperatures now. Share this. Come on. Share this with, 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 come on. Share this with 10 people. 10. Come on. Share this with 12 people. Come on. I need you. Let's do this tonight. Let's preach the word of God. 
So your mind has to undergo sanctification. Even though you're saved, your mind is being redemptive, is being redeemed. When your mind is being renewed, heaven is writing on your mind. Now you're receiving the encryption of heaven. You're no longer under satanic jurisdiction. You're now under Zoe, the city of Zion jurisdiction. When you transition in life and creation, what you're saying is my jurisdiction is from Zion. I come from the holy Zion. I come from the spiritual Zion in the name of Jesus. There's a new encryption in your mind. When your mind gets transformed, there's a rewriting, a rewriting. Come on, God is rewriting your mind. That means when you're operating under the prince of this world, you're receiving demonic downloads, satanic downloads. But now in Christ, you have a new operating system. Come on, someone. You downloaded a new operating system. You operate under heavenly, heaven's jurisdiction, which gives you dominion. The jurisdiction of heaven means glory. Glory always, the light always overcomes the darkness. So when you're operating in a heavenly jurisdiction in the glory, you're going to always have dominion over the universe, dominion over nature, dominion over spirits, because now your atmosphere shifted. Come on, somebody. Right? We're going to get there. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going to talk about alternatives, but I got so much uh, to talk about today. If you look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 35, I should have saved this for Sunday for preaching, but I'll, I'll you know, I, I try to keep it simple here, but I'm going to, I say, you know, I'm going to give him a treat today. Come on, somebody. When you look at Exodus 14, 35, watch this. It talks about God marking. So he says, you're going to have houses that you never built. You're going to have places that you never built. Come on, somebody. I'll prophesy. You're, you're having houses that you never even qualified for. God is going to give you access to cars that you couldn't even afford. You're going to access mansions and territories. That's what God was telling them. That was, that was, that, that was, that's what God was telling them in the promised land. He says, I'm giving you access to things you didn't deserve. Come on, somebody. But when you go to Exodus 14, 35, I'm going around to 41, 42. I'm not going to read all of it. He talks about, I'm going to mark certain houses. If you look at the strips... It was a, a red and green strip. Follow me. Follow me. He says when a house is marked with a green or red strip, there's, that's a signal from heaven that that house carries a demonic atmosphere. He says you can try to clean the house. You can try to fix the house up, you know, clean it out, gut it out. He says, but if, 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 if leprosy comes to the house again, it's something spiritual. He said, you must knock down every wall. Why? Because if you look at ancient civilization, follow me real quick, follow me real quick. If you look at ancient civilization, when, when people would, 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 over, would, 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 would overcome them or capture them or have victory over different regions, they didn't want their gold to be taken away. So they will melt their gold into God, gods into idols. They will melt their, their silver into idols. Watch this. The silvers were put behind the walls, in the attics or underneath the ground. Right? So even though, what? Okay, what? What? Even though the house got delivered, okay, I'm going somewhere. I'm talking about atmosphere deliverance. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna patent this because y'all ain't, ain't gonna copy this after I preach this because I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it up real quick. For, for everyone else, I'm gonna switch it up real quick. We talk about deliverance. God bless you. Share this, Melissa, as many times as you can. God bless you. We talk about deliverance. In Exodus 14, God's like, deliver the house. We represent the temple. We represent the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Deliver the house. That is a shadow. We represent the houses. He says, deliver the house. Bring deliverance. Rebuke the devil. Watch this. Okay. He says, but if it comes back, he says, now it's a spiritual thing. You must tear down the house because there's gods in the walls. That means you get deliverance, but then there's things that have to be teared down in the atmosphere because these gods that were made of gold and silver and copper were hiding behind the walls. And even though the house was getting deliverance, the, 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 the spirit was coming back to the house because of the atmosphere the house carried. So God was like, no matter how much deliverance the house gets, I'm going somewhere, share this, okay? No matter how much deliverance session the house gets, no matter how much deliverance conference the house gets, if the atmosphere is contaminated, the house will once again be, uh, uh. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The house, there you go, mom. The house will once again be contaminated. That means you can go through deliverance. 
But when you go back home, oh my God, I'm going to win. When you go back home and that atmosphere hasn't been addressed, those demons are coming back. That's why you keep on going back to the deliverance book. You keep on going back to, because it's no longer a, 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 a body issue, it's an atmosphere issue. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go there, let's go there. Okay, so watch this. Okay, can I keep on going? Should I cut this off now? If you want me to keep on going, just say, Pastor, keep on going. If not, I'll shut it down. I'll shut it down. Hey, Rakit de Mansa. So watch this. They will melt the gold. They'll put it underground. So the whole house had to be torn down, discombobulated, because the house already carried an atmosphere that was not conducive to the destiny, was not conducive to their purpose. So if, if a house did not was not conducive to the purpose of the family, to the purpose of the people. God said, I'm going to put red and green streaks. I'm going to give you a sign, Joshua. I'm giving you a sign. This house has to be addressed because this house carries a heavy, thick, dark, demonic atmosphere that even though you cleanse it. Oh my God. Spiritual technology is going to come back. And when you tear down the house and it reappears again, if you want to put that up, the situation, whatever it is, the spirit, the leprosy, the mold, the mildew, reappears again. There's something spiritual happening. And you must tear down the house. And when they would tear down the house, they would find the demons hiding. Hiding in places. Pornography hiding in places. Secrets hiding in places that were affecting the atmosphere. Kirimansa. Okay. You could be a supernatural being. Listen to me. If you have children in your house, if you have mothers or fathers or sisters in your house, they will you will have always have warfare in your house because the, the more people you have in your house, the more thickness. I'm not saying that God always needs the atmosphere to work, but you will experience spiritual warfare with a thick atmosphere. In my home, when I moved in, no one lived here before me. The atmosphere was clear for me to go. No one moved here before me, and I, I thank God for that. Right? Robo kota maman Come on, share this. Share this as many times as you can. So watch this. Atmospheres affect us greatly. Write that down. Atmospheres affect us greatly. Come on, share this with five more people. Let me see the let me see the the, 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 the views go more up. Come on, someone. I need your help. I need your help. I need people to hear this. I need to pass this word on. God is cooking up something. Atmospheres affect us greatly. An atmosphere can affect your well-being. An atmosphere can affect your sleep. An atmosphere can affect your digestive system. An atmosphere can affect your relationship. An atmosphere can affect your mood. An atmosphere can affect uh, affect how family households are talking with each other. Watch it. So, atmospheres are categorized by two things: either it's a dry atmosphere, or it's a saturated atmosphere. Right? It's a dry atmosphere. So, watch this. If, if you're operating in a dry atmosphere, you could say something positive. You could even pray for somebody. You could even say a prophetic word. But when the atmosphere is dry, you release that prophetic word out your mouth. By the time it comes to the hearer, they see it, they hear it as something negative. Because the atmosphere was dry. Watch this. If a pastor is preaching and he's giving a good word, but the atmosphere is dry, the audience would receive it as something wrong. They wouldn't be able to, uh, 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 the, the transmission the atmosphere affects the connection and the transmission, right? It, the, a, a dry atmosphere distorts the connection, right? A dry atmosphere delays the connection, right? So um, one, way, one way you can start affecting your atmosphere today is your prayer life. Are you with me? Share this as many times as you can in the name of Jesus. God is speaking. So the atmospheres, if, if you don't affect the atmosphere with your prayer life, watch this. And discipline yourself to pray. The atmosphere will even affect your prayer life. Okay? Watch this. John chapter 2. John chapter 2 verse 15. John chapter 2 verse 15. We read that Jesus. Watch this. It says, so he made a whip of cords. And this is, this is he wasn't anger like, 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 like manly anger. It was the indignation of God. So he made a whip of cords and drove them all out the temple cords, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturn the tables someone saying it's time to overturn table cha ta tables it's time to overturn tables what jesus was doing in the temple he was cleansing the atmosphere that was preventing and prohibiting the glory of god to move are you with me jesus says listen it, it may look crazy what i'm doing but in the name of jesus i pray that you take out your apostolic whip 
and start whipping things and whipping people in your atmosphere. Now, I'm not saying whip your children now. But there's things that got to be whipped out of your atmosphere. Jesus says, you are preventing, you are restricting the glory of God. When Jesus overturned the tables and he whipped, he says, I got to cultivate. And then he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He's correlating atmospheres with prayer. Oh my God. Roban sheti makata ramansa. I told you yesterday, when Jesus prayed in the book of Luke, in the, in the Mount of Transfiguration, it said only when he prayed, not when he preached, not when he, not when he did signs and wonders, not when he walked on water. Only when he prayed, it said his countenance changed. There's something that happens when you pray. Come on, share this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 9, verse 23 and 26. We're talking about, and I spoke, I did speak about atmospheres before a while back, but I'm going to read. It's kind of a continuation because I did preach on the scripture while back on Matthew chapter 9 verse 23 going to 26 when Jesus entered the synagogue watch the synagogue leaders of the house saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipes and of the other version says they were crying right? he said go away the girl is not dead but asleep this is when he was in Jairus' house we gotta enter Jairus' house it says but watch this the crowd laughed verse 25 and the crowd had been put outside so watch this before I address atmospheres in Jairus' house he had an overturned atmosphere. He had to drive the people out to, to cultivate the miracle. But this is what I get out of this story. Am I coming in clear? The people were crying. They were playing pipes. Right? They were, oh my God, crying. All of a sudden, when Jesus tells them to get out, they start laughing at him. How do they switch from crying to laughter in a millisecond? That's the religious people. Religious people will tell you, I love you, pastor. I'm crying for you for Zion. I'm interceding. And when you correct them, they'll turn on you real quick. The religious mindsets, the religious spirit will turn on you in a heartbeat. They'll cry with you the one day. And they'll flip on you the second day. You, one day you're their best friend. You're their spiritual father. The next day you're the scum of hell. Come on, someone. That's religion, right? That's what happened to Jesus. Right? So after the crowd had been put outside, you got to put some people outside. He went and took the girl by the hand. And she got up. Te la kumi. Get up in the name of Jesus. And the, the, the word spread in the region. What am I saying? Before Jesus cultivated the miracle, he had to change the atmosphere. I did a preach on that before. I'm not going to go real deep on that. He had to clear the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Right? The same people that you preach their crying and crying in your sermon are the same people that start laughing at you and mocking you. That's called the religious spirit. Right? They say they love you, then they lash at you. Okay, so let me keep on going. Let's skip that. Watch this. Atmospheres attract spirits. So an atmosphere is called to host spirits. Are you with me? An atmosphere hosts spirit. Come on, share this on your Facebook. I challenge you. Listen, some of you are going to share this on your Facebook. You're going to be blessed. In the next week, because you're sowing a seed. When you share the content I'm giving you, you're sowing a seed. I'm not just about, talking about money. You're sowing a seed to people. Okay? Watch this. So atmospheres host spiritual activity, whether good or bad. Okay? So when you are praying and you're interceding, listen to me. When you're praying and interceding, you're filling an atmosphere. When you pray for two hours or three hours, then the glory of God moves for the next 24 hours, you were filling the atmosphere. Right? At times, even um, I teach my evangelism team this, you know, um, Deaconess Maria is on the line and those that evangelize. The greatest evangelist is before you go to the region, you pray for the region. You pray for an hour. You pray at night for that for that block, for that territory, for that town, for that city you're going to enter. You intercede for it. You pray for it. You saturate it. What you're doing is you're injecting the city with the glory. You're injecting that community with the glory. Or before you go to visit a family, you start interceding for that family. Because what you're doing is you're speaking a different, you're speaking a heavenly atmosphere before you enter. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, listen, I'm going to give you scripture on that. Katorobo Shatama. So right, atmospheres attract spirits, right? right? So you start injecting and filling and stocking the atmosphere. A lot of times we go into this because we didn't replenish the atmosphere. We got to replenish the atmosphere with our prayers. So watch this. When Jesus would pray in the mountain, he was replenishing, he was injecting, he was infiltrating the land with a presence of God, with a glorious atmosphere, with a divine atmosphere. He was infiltrating the atmosphere, right? So, you could pray for, you know, for those of you that have been praying for Zion, we could have two years of just prayer services and all of a sudden you see revival. Because that two years will bring increase because when you intercede, when you pray, when you prophesy, when you decree, 
the length of time does matter. Yes, the length and the quality. I know people say quantity is not quant is not uh, quantity is quality is both. Okay, when you do that, you're injecting the atmosphere. Bam, 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 and it'll give you a long time harvest. Watch this. Even in deliverance ministries, before we do mass deliverance, Zion, we, we you know we're, we're going to even do this at a greatest at, uh, level after this preaching. You got to fill the atmosphere for the deliverance, right? For the mass deliverance. Because, watch this, the atmosphere got to be able to handle the disease, the HIV, the STD, the brokenhearted, the lame, the sick, the depressed, the suicidal. The at, you got to prepare the atmosphere for handling such, such chaotic movements, right? Sickness, demons. So, uh, I don't know if you heard this, I'm not going to be too much longer. Um, write, write this down if you are, it's called the law of accumulation. Right, open heavens, and I'm going to get there too when we talk about altars. Open heavens over the atmosphere. You got to prepare the atmosphere. It's called the law of accumulation. In heaven, it's called the cup is 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 is, is overflowing. Right, the law of accumulation is you keep on accumulating. This is when you pray. The law of accumulation, you're overflowing the atmosphere with the presence, overflowing. So watch this. The pastor doesn't even have to be that anointed. Because there's some places that I went to that I did signs and wonders because the atmosphere. You see some pastors like, how did you move like that? You don't move like that here in America. It's because when he went to Africa, he went to China, India. The atmosphere was already in place for the man of God. Are you with me? Come on, share this as many times as you can. Watch this. We're going to talk about atmosphere, atmosphere shifting, atmosphere change. I'm going to give you um, some Old Testament and New Testament. I'm going to give you Old Testament and New Testament pedigree and instructions. Watch this. First Kings 18. First Kings 18:31. I'm going to give you time to get there. First Kings 18:31. Write that down. Uh, the 32. And Elijah took the 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, right? To whom the word of the Lord came to him saying, Israel shall be thy name. And the stones he had built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench over the altar as great. So watch this. Before fire came from heaven, Elijah had to prepare the atmosphere. God bless you. Share this as many times as you can. Those of you that log in on me, share with five people. Five people. So fire, this just didn't come down from heaven. Elijah had to prepare an altar. I'm going to go first next to the altar. But he had to prepare an atmosphere for the fire of God to come down. Are you with me? So Elijah understood the strategy of heaven. He understood the technology of heaven. He understood the power of altars. So watch this. When you pray and you fast, you purge your atmosphere. It, especially after deliverance. Listen. If there has been arrest in your house, domestic violence in your house, if you and your spouse had a fight, you have to purge the atmosphere with prayer. You have to, it said, watch this, even Daniel opened the windows. You got to purge the atmosphere. You got to conduct the deliverance in the atmosphere. You got to, you, you, you got to, you got to inject the atmosphere with the Spirit of God. Listen, you got to rebuke that porn out of the atmosphere. You got to rebuke the adultery out of the atmosphere. Sometimes you got to open the windows. Listen, do prophetic actions. Open. You might, people might think you're crazy. You, you, you do a, a, a spring atmosphere cleaning. Maybe like once a month, you open doors and everything, windows, and say, in the name of Jesus, get out of my atmosphere. Spirit of adultery, get out of my atmosphere. Spirit of lust, get out of my atmosphere. Spirit of addiction, get out of my atmosphere. Spirit of strife, get out of my atmosphere. Spirit of violence and domestic violence, get out of my atmosphere. You have to, yes, disinfect, sterilize your atmosphere. Everybody was all big with COVID. Sterilize everything. You got to treat your atmosphere the way you treated COVID. Oh, yeah, I said it. I said it. Treat your atmosphere the way... Listen, kick those spirits out. Renounce them. Huh? So watch this. If you don't know how to deliver your atmosphere, it's going to be hard for you to stay delivered. Are you with me? If you don't deliver... So atmospheres also represent legal rights. Demonic legal rights. Portals that Satan opens. That he has a legal rights. Right? So, so atmospheres are described, and I'm going to go back to it, by two categories. Your atmosphere is either dry or fertile. Come on, share this with at least three people. Come on, somebody. Somebody got to hear this. The atmospheres right now, even atmospheres even cry out. But atmospheres are either dry or they're fertile. That's why the demons, they were in dry places. They were in waterless places. Demons hang out. The hangout of demons are in dry places. If your ministry, your church is not fertile and is dry... Demons will be there. 
If your household has a dry atmosphere, even though your church is on fire, demons will hang out in your house. Right? Wherever there's a church division, that means your atmosphere is dry. When there's church gossip, your atmosphere is dry. When the pastor falls in a scandal, the atmosphere is dry in the name of Jesus. Right now, so, so when people go into the church and they never come back, what people test is the atmosphere. Now, well, you should test the atmosphere. And I know not all people do this, but you, a spiritual person does that. You have the greatest worship team, the greatest kids corner, the greatest youth group, uh, the, 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 the theatrical worship team. You can have the pantomimes, you know, the move around with the faces. You can do all that. But if the atmosphere is dry, they're not going to come back. Right? If the atmosphere is dry in your life, listen, women. If you're looking for a spiritual man, but you walk with a dry atmosphere, do not expect a spiritual husband. A spiritual man of God would not be attracted with a woman that walks with a dry atmosphere. Vice versa. Men. A spiritual woman of God would not be attracted, listen, to a man that has a dry atmosphere. Listen, I, I, I broke it down yesterday. People that are uniquely yoked, even, in Christ, even Christians can be uniquely yoked. They have a collision with atmospheres. No, I want to go to the prophetic church. No, I want to go to the, to the, to the, to the gummy bear friendly church. You know, the, the, the secret friendly church. There's a cloud in atmospheres. Even in marriages, there's a cloud in atmospheres. Even in families, there's a cloud with atmospheres. Right? So watch this. When the atmosphere is full of the glory of God, whether in the church or business, even some of you that do business sales, you have to get there. Okay, watch this. Come on, somebody. If you have a problem at your job, you have to get there before your boss. That means if you schedule at 8.30, you got to get there at 8. And for 30 minutes, clear out the atmosphere in your workplace. And watch your boss be submitted to that atmosphere. The problem is your boss gets to work before you. He cultivates the atmosphere. So now you're fighting the atmosphere that he created. But if you get there before your supervisor, come on somebody, this is somebody. You are now rearranging. You're now technically switching the atmosphere. An atmosphere of the spirit, watch this. An atmosphere of the spirit, it breeds, it breeds, um, you can write this down. It breeds joy. It breeds peace. You can tell you're in an atmosphere of the glory because there's a lot of celebration, a lot of love, signs and wonders, miracles. All right? Okay, I'm closing up. So watch this. Spirits are attracted to atmospheres. Good preaching is good, but you got to check the atmosphere of your church. I don't, I, I don't care how many Bible studies you did. I don't care how much tongues you... You can speak all the tongues you want and the atmosphere. Now, when you talk collectively in tongues of the church, it does switch atmospheres. It's, it's happening in Zion. Okay? You can know the most Bible verses you want. But if you don't address the atmosphere, there will be a problem. Right? So. So watch this. When you're under the atmosphere of glory, there's forgiveness, there's grace. Right? And you can just sit in the atmosphere. So you have one or two categories. One or two. Um, one or two uh, movements in the atmosphere. Okay. So now, this is the thing I want to teach you then. I want to teach you then. Okay. Now that you understand the power of atmospheres, this is what I really want to get to tonight. Okay. Th this is where you should start sharing this. Is sustainability of atmospheres. Write that down, right? The reason heaven is heaven because there's a sustained atmosphere. There's a sustained climate in heaven. There's a sustained climate. There's a sustained temperature in heaven. Watch this. There, there, there's no night in heaven, the word of God says. That means the atmosphere is sustained. Okay. So, when you sustain atmospheres, and for example, my, you might, today was a great day, God moved in my life. What you're saying is, yeah, the Spirit of God was with you, the Holy Spirit, but there was an atmosphere cultivated. You have to investigate what atmosphere you cultivated. Even in your church movement, you see churches that, man, church is on fire, they got moved because they were under a different atmosphere. And that's the key, learning how to sustain your atmospheres. Write that down. Robakit de man shakan do monsa. You know, man, church service was fire. People were screaming. People were crying, getting delivered because the church was under a particular atmosphere. In the Garden of Eden, Adam was under the atmosphere of glory, right? So you have to investigate and, and not try to anticipate God or predict God, right? You have to know what atmosphere you were operating in, right? So there's a difference between dissatisfied and unsatisfied. A lot of you people are not dissatisfied with your pastors. You love your pastors. You speak good about your apostles, your prophets, but many of you are unsatisfied. You're unsatisfied with the worship. You're unsatisfied with the way the Holy Spirit moves. You're not dissatisfied. I mean, you're not unsatisfied. You're dissatisfied, right? And I mean, 
so a lot of us are not unsatisfied with the man of God or the ministry, but we get dissatisfied. Okay? Now, under the difference between dissatisfied and unsatisfied. You're, you're not unsatisfied with the ministry, but you're dissatisfied with the ministry on how they conduct the movement of God in the churches. Right? So in the name of Jesus, I speak a mega, I'm going I'm to I'm prophesy right now. I speak a mega presence of God in your life. I speak a mega move of God in your life. I speak signs and wonders to happen now in the name of Jesus. I speak a mega, a mega, a tremendous move of God. Unusual miracles, the grace of speed like never before will enter your churches, will enter your homes. God right now will move. This is why even in Zion we're, 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 we're cultivating our own ministry because when, when the atmosphere changes, you can pray all night. You can pray for hours, be on the floor and be like, man, God is moving. And there's a, re there's a reconstruction in your mind. There's a, there's a recalibration. There's a reconciliation even in families. Listen, when families are, I don't care how much therapy you do. When families are under the glory, they, if they're about to get a divorce, when they're under an atmosphere of glory, there's no more divorce. They love each other. They forgive each other. I don't even care if, adult, I don't even care if adultery is there. When the atmosphere is saturated, that's the best counseling you could have. Come on, share this as many times as you can in the name of Jesus. When you're under an atmosphere of glory, watch this, your, even your personality changes. When you're under an atmosphere of glory, even your body, listen, listen, you might think I'm crazy. There's people that lost weight under an atmosphere of glory. Their body shifted. It said even the face of Stephen was shifted because Stephen in the book of Acts, he operated under different glory. The body of Jesus was different. His countenance was different when he operated under another glory. Come on, somebody. Come on, share this. Share this with two people. Let two people know I'm live in the name of Jesus. WhatsApp somebody. Share it on your WhatsApp. Share it on your groups. Somebody got to hear this now in the name of Jesus. So watch this. This was going on about sustaining atmospheres and when I spoke about deliverance. You can have a mass deliverance to the church. Man, service was powerful today. God moved today. God moved like never before today. The presence of God just changed our lives. The presence of God just moved like never before. But not just when you get home, when you get home, something happens. Share this. Come on, somebody. So you were in church. God moved. Right? You're the same person. But now, when you got home, after church service, after all you had a three-day retreat, you went to a camp service, God moved, oh my God, the presence of God. When you got home, the same personality that you left is back there waiting for you. Because you entered, church is powerful, the, God moved, but now when you go back home, you enter an atmosphere of porn. You enter an atmosphere of lust. You enter an atmosphere of sickness. You enter an atmosphere of addiction. You enter an atmosphere of arguing. You enter an atmosphere of violence. Watch this. So even though you left church, you're like, man, Sunday church was powerful. But right after me and my boo got home, come on somebody, we started going through a fight. We started going through an issue. Because what you're saying is church is powerful, but you couldn't sustain the atmosphere to your house. Are you with me? So those of you that live with people, a lot of people in your house, this will be more challenging to you. This will be more challenging to you because you're dealing with a lot of different personalities and when you have like a house that has five, six, seven people, everybody, you, you're dealing with different atmospheres in that house. So what I recommend when you deal with that, you have to have your own room if you're dealing with that. And your room has to be the atmosphere in that house for you and for your children. When you get out of that room, you're going to feel the atmospheres outside of your room, but in that room, that's your atmosphere. Those are, those are for you that live with a lot of people or you have roommates and stuff like that. You have to con conduct an atmosphere in your room. So watch this. I teach families in Zion. You have to purge the atmosphere from de demonic influences. Yes, it's spirits. But I'm not talking about demonic possession today. I'm talking about your atmosphere being possessed. Not you. Because there's many Christians that are not possessed. But their atmosphere is influencing them. Right? This, and a lot of times, atmospheres are produced. Are, are, are created by, by demonic. And watch this. Atmospheres are also created by your carnality. I'm only going to be on here for 10 more minutes. Come on, share this. Share this. I, don't want to, I can't be on here for too long tonight. So watch this. There's evil atmospheres in the... There's evil spirits that influence your atmosphere. And the atmosphere influences you. Watch this. That's why the Word of God says, do not go down angry. Right? Do not... The Word of God says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why does it say that? Because a lot of things you're feeling in the day, you got to address it before the sun goes down. Actual repentance if you went and sinned. Actual forgiveness. Go into consecration. Fast. 
Why? Because the next day, if you don't address that, the atmosphere gets more heavier. It's like a snowball effect. That means every day you go without addressing an atmosphere, the atmosphere gets stronger and stronger. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why if you had a fight with your spouse, talk to your spouse. Say, look, you got to end it real quick. Even if you feel bad, this ain't masculine me right now. For me to ask forgiveness. But you, you, you have the wisdom of the spirit. You're, you're asking for forgiveness and addressing it because that can actually bring a demonic atmosphere and cause chaos in your family. Demonic, a lot of people that get murdered, a lot of people that go through stuff, um, drugs, um, brujeria in the house, witchcraft in the house, those are demonic atmospheres. Deaths and stuff are byproduct of atmospheres. I've preached this before. Right? So watch this. You have to learn. The atmosphere becomes more dense. You have to learn how to close doors because atmospheres open portals. Come on, somebody. Share this. All right? So we talk about technology. Technology can be a double-edged sword. Technology can be a double-edged sword. It can be good or bad. When you open your phone, when you open your tablet, when you open your laptop, when you open your computer, when you go onto the internet, when you put on that 60 inch TV, that TV becomes a landing strip for Satan. So watch this, that TV is there's, there's cursing, if there's sex, if there's rated R, that's going into the atmosphere. You have to protect your atmosphere. That means, that means even when you shut off your TV, the landing strip for a lot of satanic atmosphere infections is technology, is your phone, is the chat, is the messages that opens doors to a heavy demonic atmosphere. And a lot of you watching the Jeffrey Dahmer, who I told you yesterday, I want to know about Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay, I, I understand historically and informationally you want to know, but you're, you're downloading an atmosphere. I'm not talking about going to hell here, but you're downloading an atmosphere. You're not carrying Zoe life. When you speak about Zoe life, you're carrying the atmosphere of heaven. When you see the nudity on, online or on TV, the sexuality, the curse words that come out of uh, whatever you're watching. You don't curse, but the TV is cursing. The songs are cursing in your, your radio, in your car. It's bringing an atmosphere in your car. Come on, somebody. Come on, share this as many times as you can. Watch this. James chapter 3, verse 11. James 3, verse 11. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? What am I saying? At the atmosphere is either filled with the glory of God or filled with demonic darkness. The atmosphere, there can be two infiltration in the atmosphere. That means there got to be one God in the atmosphere. That's why Elijah said, if Baal be your God, then let him be your God. But if Jehovah be your God, let him be your God. The atmosphere can only be controlled by one God. So if your atmosphere is not heavenly, there's no middle ground, it's demonic. Even if you're like, yo, pastor, there's nothing bad going around my house. Eventually, eventually, remember I said, the law of accumulation. When you pray and fast, there's a law of accumulation in your atmosphere. When you do satanic practices, nothing is happening, but the law of accumulation eventually, death, sickness, witchcraft, demonic activity will happen in your house. When you pray and fast, heavenly activity will happen in your house. Are you with me? Any questions or comments, I want to address it. If you're getting fed by this word, say, Amen, I hear you, I hear you. Come on, share this. That's, listen, that's why... I always teach people in your house, always keep worship on. If you have a minister you like watching, let them preach 24-7 in your house. That when you enter your house, you're, ever, you're entering a godly atmosphere. Because 24-7, watch this, that's why the tabernacle of David was so important. The tabernacle of David was 24-7 worship and, and praising God. There's power in praise as well. Because there were, the, the, the in, around, in around the tabernacle of David and in around the, the Ark of the Covenant, there was an atmosphere that followed it, okay? Robot kid in him. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta listen to the Spirit of God. Remember, I, I said this, I put a post. The way you know, so, okay, I, I don't wanna, I'm gonna deviate a little bit. The way you know is the, the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is that the Spirit of God quickly talks to you. Like when it's a carnality or demonic, it's slowly a thought. But when the Spirit said, you know, if you read the Word of God, says, and the Word of God came to me, and the Word of God spoke to me, it's quick. Whatever is demonic, it accumulates, it's slow. The Word of God, boom, it touches you. And watch this, you know it's from God. Because it will assault and, uh, and bother your carnality. Your flesh and your, car your carnality is not going to want to submit to that word. That's how you know it's God, okay? Yes, you create an atmosphere in your household. Add to your atmosphere. You want to add praise. You want to prophesy over your atmosphere. Amen, in the name of Jesus, right? So a lot of times, a lot of us need to repent for the atmospheres that we're conducting around our children 
and we're allowing for those parents that don't discipline your children, you allow your children to create a satanic atmosphere. I know children, little Johnny acting up, cursing, pouting. Oh, take a nap, Johnny. No, he, he that little Johnny, that little little son or daughter of yours is creating a demonic atmosphere. And you're trying to put them through counseling and give them pop a pill. No, he needs discipline. She needs discipline. Now for somebody, come on. Okay, I, I got I, I got to run. I got to run. Hey, cut that out, Watch this. An atmosphere can rob you from your anointing. What do I mean? Okay, so I'm going to give you biblical references. And it's Old Testament. But when Jezebel said, listen, what you did to the prophets of Baal, I will do to you by tomorrow. What Jezebel did was affect the atmosphere and the anointing of the prophet. The prophet went running. Because Jezebel said, listen, I don't really got to talk to the prophet directly. But if I can affect the atmosphere of the prophet, I can put fear in the prophet. Right? Some of you are going to households and you're going into your house and your atmosphere is wary. Watch this. Your atmosphere is loneliness. Your atmosphere is fear. Your atmosphere is anxiety. And you entering that house and all of a sudden church is fire. But when you entered your house, you felt like an orphan. You felt lonely. You felt discouraged. There's a lot of atmosphere, atmospheres you enter that are discouraging atmospheres, depressing atmospheres. It is your responsibility. Right? The kingdom of God suffers violence and only the violence taken by force. When you look at that verse in John, it's speaking of atmospheres. You have to take atmospheres by force. You have to demolish atmospheres by force. Right? So watch this. Atmospheres will sustain climates. Write this down. That means certain atmospheres have temperatures. Like when I'm under the anointing, it gets hot, the power of God, the fire of the Spirit of God. Right? Some atmospheres are very cold. When you go to houses that there's no love, you'll feel cold in the house because that house has a a, 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 a a atmosphere that affect the climate. So what I mean by climate, also, for example, I live in Florida, right? The atmosphere here affects the climate. The climate is that it's always hot. The climate then affects the culture. People want to go to the beach. They want to suntan lotion sales go up, towel sales go up, sandals go up, because the climate affects the culture. So atmosphere affects the climate. The climate affects the culture. I got to repeat it. Yes, there is a uh, good one, man of God. God bless you, pastor. Yes, the thermostat. You've got to check the thermostat of your ministry. Watch this. You've got to even check the thermostat of the environment of your house, of your business, of your organization. Because it draws culture, right? Even people in your church are drawn to the temperature. They're drawn to the climate of your atmosphere. Watch this. So the first thing you got to have, why I really wanted to speak about atmospheres because God is going to prepare the church listen to me for an atmosphere of revival revival is coming to South Florida but if you're like man God has always said revival is never going to happen if you don't believe it's not going to happen if you don't believe God can heal you from an STD or HIV it's never going to happen if you don't think that God can heal your pain in your knee it's not going to happen you need to believe and say, I'm going to have the mentality of revival. I'm going to have a oh, mentality. And why Florida? I'm going to tell you why Florida has been one of the chosen ones because of the government. Because we have a government even um, whether you believe in, I don't believe in politics. I believe in government. And all I know is whether it's a political thing, the government that we have, no, Ron DeSantis, he represents, a, he replicates a godly, a godly atmosphere. So our government, DeSantis, represents a godly atmosphere where we can now plug in as the church and we can now infiltrate the glory of God on the atmosphere. What do I mean? Murder. Yes. What do I mean? Uh, abortion. Right? Things. Um, riots. We have Florida has an atmosphere. Watch this. I'm not speaking about politics. I'm about godly government. The Santis represents. Well, you believe in politics. I'm not going red, blue, uh, Democrat, Republican. I'm going into kingdom government. What emulates? What is symmetrical? What is parallel to kingdom government? It's 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 it's, it's re- bringing Christ back in the church. It's not t- teaching our children um, um, uh, uh, by uh, homosexuality, um, lesbianism, uh, trans uh, transgender. No, no. It's teaching. He said we're not going to have that here. That represents godly government. That means that we. Florida, South Florida, if you have a ministry in South Florida, you're going to move to South Florida, we are in the atmosphere of revival, right? So because we're in the atmosphere of revival and the atmosphere um, um, interacts with our conscience, our mind, we Floridians, God, I know God had a revival in Nineveh, but even Nineveh, watch this, so let's go back to Nineveh, man, there's so much in this tonight, man, share this with three more people, when Jonah went to Nineveh, why he went to Nineveh and Nineveh, even the animals had to fast and pray because before revival came on Nineveh, 
God had to change the atmosphere of Nineveh. Right? So Florida, Floridians, people that are in Florida, I declare Florida will be a Zion state, a state of Zion. The city of Zion will enter Florida. And you're going to see revival happening. But I, the church needs to be in revival mentality. That means we need to be in more prayer. Why prayer? Because prayer refills. It's almost like a gun, right? When you shoot bullets, you got to refill the you got to refill the cartridge. You got to you got to you got to refill the chamber or refill the magazine, right? When you pray, you're refilling the magazine in the atmosphere, right? Boom, 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 boom. Refill, refill, drop and load, right? You you tap and rack, right? So when you pray, you're refilling the the magazine, the atmosphere with spiritual ammunition, okay? Right? So we see in the word of God. Um, man, it's, it's so much tonight. So watch this. Um, we see that Jesus kicked the people out of the temple, right? And we see he was in the atmosphere. Now, we read the word of God. If you want to go, uh, when, when, when Jesus sent them out, right? Jesus sent them out. So he had 12 disciples, but he also had 70. When he had the 70, watch this. He sent them out two by two. That means there was groups of 35. There were teams of 35. He sent them out with teams of 35, right? So when he sent them out of teams of 35, watch this. If you read Luke uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. I want to teach you kingdom strategy, how even Jesus prepared atmospheres. Should I stop this and, and do part two later? Or you guys want to hear this tonight? Amen. If you guys want to keep on hearing this, then share this. Let the views go up. If not, we'll, we'll do it another day. But let people know I'm on in the name of Jesus. Watch this. Katarramansha. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 After this the Lord appointed 72 And sent them two by two Ahead of him To every town and place Where he was Watch this about to go That means Jesus said listen I'm about to go to these regions Prepare the atmosphere before I get in If you don't believe me watch what Jesus says But whatever house you enter I'm going to verse 5 right now But whatever house you enter first Say, peace be unto the house. Verse 6. And if a son of peace is there, look at the son of peace. You can write down, I am a son of peace. I am a son of peace. Watch this. I am, I am a son of peace. If the son of peace is there, the peace will rest on it. If the son of peace is not there, it will, the peace will return back to you. Verse 7. And it says, and remain in the house. Right? He said, remain in the house and stay there. Let it rest there. So Jesus said, listen, if the peace remains in the house, I'm going to that house. Because that house is going to accept my anointing. That house is going to accept my power. That house is going to accept my teaching. That house um, is going to accept the healing in the name of Jesus. That house, watch this. And, and if you read verse 9, uh, and you, go, you can even go down to verse 9 and read. Right? Um... And he said, say the kingdom of God has come. Right? Come on, share this, right? Yes, you are a son of peace. You are a son of peace in the name of Jesus. So Jesus, if, if Jesus had to prepare an atmosphere before he went to a place, how come you're going to places without an atmosphere being conducive to the presence of God? Hmm? Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one more thing right now. All right. So Romans 12:1. I said this yesterday. We're no longer manipulated by the government and the stratosphere, the atmosphere of this world. All right. So when you read, okay, when you read about altars, because I, I got access. Some people asking about altars versus atmospheres, right? Okay, you with me? I got 10 more minutes. Altar. I'm trying to be out of here by nine. Altars versus atmosphere. Romans 12.1 Romans 12.1 When you speak about Romans 12.1 It's a position is a, is, the, is, is a posture Right Romans 12.1 Right um, When you speak about Romans 12.1 It's an obedience It's a measure It's an altar Right So I want you to realize that altars You can write this down Altars represent gates in the spirit Right When Elijah was building an altar So why are altars important? That's they look. Have a prayer place in your house. Have a prayer closet. When you create an altar, the altar infiltrates the atmosphere. Right? So you read in the Old Testament, they had to prepare altars because, watch this, the altar opens a portal so the Spirit of God can move. See, Elijah understood this, right? 
That's why he prepared an altar. So listen to me. Right? Yes, altars represent gates in the spirit. So I Building altars open gates for his glory. Building altars opens gates for heavens to come down in the name of Jesus. So when you talk about Romans chapter 12, 1, right now I'm going to New Testament, the new covenant, the dispensation of grace. He said, Romans 12, 1, what he was saying was, now you don't so much need physical altars, you yourself are the altar, right? You yourself are the devotion, the humility, and the obedience without a doubt of measure of a, a measure that means you become an altar the church becomes an altar you establish a gate for heaven you establish a portal for heaven to break into earth okay yes abraham built an altar jacob built an altar king david built an altar watch this so when you look at even in the day of pentecost when you look at the spirit of god coming they were a represented an altar, right? And they heard a noise come from heaven. They saw they had the appearance of tongues. They were filled with the Spirit of God. Once God answered, so watch this. You have, you have Elisha, the fire coming down in the Old Testament. That same thing happens to the church in Acts chapter 2. So it's, it's, it's the same imagery. It's parallel, right? So the upper room carries the glory of God and carries the presence of God. Now they were empowered to do the work of God on earth. Watch this. So God is calling our churches right now to build altars of worship right now in the name of Jesus. To build altars of repentance in the name of Jesus. To build altars of surrenderance. To build altars of devotion. To build altars of sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Watch this. Uh, uh, 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5. He is looking for a place for altars for his glory. Watch this. These altars become gates for his kingdom that rule and flow on the earth. Watch this. Altars to the Lord are the establishment of places prepared for fire and glory. Altars of the Lord open portals of heaven and of worship to minister unto God's people. It open, it represents gates that open. Watch this. Gates that influence the atmosphere. So watch this. These altars when you create an altar and you pray and you and, and you dedicate a time of prayer to God and I spoke about this a time of prayer. Come on. Share this with a few people. When you pray you prepare a spiritual altar in your house. That altar opens up gates and atmospheres for the windows of heaven, right? For the windows of heaven. It prepares, that, that window represents a gate that comes into your house that's being released. It strengthens you. It prepares you. So in the day of Pentecost, altars were prepared. The altars were fresh fire. Um, they brought fresh fire. And, and may be a portal of the Lord um, to bring a greater measure of the kingdom of Christ in your life. So it is, it is the joy of the Lord. For the people of God to be administered by Him and by angels. Right? So, the difference between altars and atmospheres is that when you create altars in the spirit, even psychic people, demonic people, that's why you see they have little altars of Buddha, because that altar is infecting the atmosphere with something. Okay? That's why if you look, um, um, even Gideon, when Gideon was called in the book of Judges, the first assignment Gideon was given was to break down his father's altars. Because like, Gideon, I'm going to give you the victory, but these altars are affecting the atmosphere, right? And this atmosphere would affect your productivity in the spirit, your victory, your destiny. So before I can use you, Gideon, you got to destroy the altars of your father so the atmospheres can be purged. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I'll close with that tonight. Hey, Karaman Shetirema. The atmospheres had to be purged with Gideon. So a lot of you still have little idols in your house that your mama gave you, little beads. Those beads carry atmosphere. Those rituals that you're doing carry atmosphere. That religious activity, no, it was it was un collazo de mamá. It was some beads of mamá. Era una carta. They're creating atmospheres. Yes, your altar. So in in the ministry. We cre why we're so powerful corporately because we create all the altars come together and, the and a dunamis power explosion happens. So right now we are the altars of the spirit. Right? We are the altars of the spirit. Come on, share with somebody. God is moving. We are now the altars of we host the presence of God. So when we pray, when we kneel down on our knees, when we are creating altars in the spirit, that allows like Elijah, fire came from heaven, those altars open spiritual realms, spiritual doors, spiritual windows, spiritual portals, whatever you want to call it, spiritual gates, 
Right? I know gates and doors are different. The gate comes before the door. So it's not the same thing. So you got a gate, right? Then the gate is the first thing to open. Then from the gate comes the doors, then the windows. Did you catch that? In, in the process. So you have gates open up first spiritually, then doors, then windows. Right? You can't open the windows without going through the door. And you can't open the door without going through the gate. Okay? Come on, share this with somebody. God is going to bless you. I want to pray for you. I'm closing out. I'm going to give time for Q&A. I'm going to prophesy and speak to you in the name of Jesus. Anybody got questions or comments tonight? If, if you if you just catch me now, catch on the rebound. Hey man, if this, listen, I don't I don't need your money, but if this if this message has so on you, so, so touched you, so watch this. When you sow to an atmosphere that's fertile, your sowing also re- is released into atmospheres. So watch this. When you're under demonic atmosphere, people can't give. They can't give. But people, the early church were give, they even, watch this, they laid their properties in the feet of the apostle because they were under, when you're under atmosphere of glory, you're a giver. You're like, amen. So right now, in the name of Jesus, if this message has touched you and changed your life, and I'm more than sure, um, I'm going to ask um, one of my leaders, Lisette, to put the Zion, you guys can sow. If it's, listen, I challenge you, if it's five bucks, sow five bucks. Let even your sowing be prophetic. Five is the number of grace. Uh, 50, if you want to sow 50, Jubilee, 7, 70, 70, Jubilee, 120, 120 room. You can even go prophetic with your sowing. 12 represents the, 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 um, the 12 apostles, the 12 gates, the 24 elders, 24. Let your prophetic be, be you let your sowing be prophetic. But I challenge you to sow today because you're sowing into a fertile atmosphere. When you sow into a dry atmosphere, you will actually, it, it won't, it's not, nothing will happen. If you sow into a dry atmosphere, actually negative will come back. When you sow into a saturated atmosphere, a fertile atmosphere, multiplication happens. Amen? Thank you. I challenge you to sow into this atmosphere, right? And, and those of you that go to churches, I'm not saying you got to leave your church if it's a dry atmosphere, but that atmosphere will start affecting you. The atmosphere the man of God carries in your life, the atmosphere the man or woman of God carries in your life will affect you. That's why you got to study and be able to extract atmospheres. And I said this yesterday in the prophetic line. It, it, it's not just about discerning people Because I can discern you before I meet you Because I recognize the atmosphere you carry So If I discern your atmosphere It will protect me and my family right? Even people you do business with People you're about to marry Discern the atmosphere they carry right? Yes There's, there's demonic portals and godly portals But the way to open portals Is by, is by altars Right um, when you pray, when you when I, I I taught this in church Sunday, pick a specific time to pray. There, there's an opening, right? Just even in church, right? So the man of God is preaching in church. Oh my God! And a woman starts crying. At times it can be the enemy trying to distract the church, but at times it can be the Holy Spirit trying to speak. At times when the man of God starts addressing that cry and that scream, like like Barnabas, son of Jesse, son of David, have mercy on me. They're like, man, shut up, old man. The Spirit of God was reaching the atmosphere. When Jesus opened his eyes, the presence of God filled the atmosphere, right? The glory of God filled the atmosphere, the kabod of God. And when the weight of his glory fills the atmosphere, people just fall on the floor. Like you can't even preach, you can't even talk because the, the atmosphere is so thick with his presence. When you operate an atmosphere of glory, things happen fast. For example, Adam, he didn't have to sow a seed and wait for it to grow and cultivate it. When Adam sowed a seed in the Garden of Eden, it grew right away immediately because the atmosphere was full of speed. The atmosphere is full of glory. When you sow in an atmosphere, when you when you are conducted, when you station and position and plant yourself in an atmosphere of glory, things start happening in your life. Positions, jobs, breakthroughs. Because you've positioned yourself and planted yourself in a fertile atmosphere, in a saturated atmosphere, not a dry atmosphere. If you are planted in a dry atmosphere, your roots will start drying up. Your fruits will start drying up. The tree will start dying. Okay? Thank you for those of you that are sowing. I'm receiving your seed now. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for the cash apps. I love you all. I I I, prom- I, I, I I speak in the name of Jesus for those of you that sold into this atmosphere today. Because right now, I'm speaking to you, but my atmosphere is touching you. I'm speaking to you, but you're locating. You're being now, you're locating. I'm transitioning atmosphere to you in the name of Jesus. Okay. There we go. Any Q&A before I go? Or if you guys want to comment, add, you would add to the preaching. Because the Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us. If you have a prophetic word, if you want to speak in the name of Jesus. Shakata Ramansa. Yes, you can you can sow 144, right? Represent the 144. Amen. Yes, atmosphere, good prophet. Atmosphere can uh, give birth 
in part prosper things. Yes, atmosphere is a portal, give births. Even uh, when a mother is giving birth in a hospital, they have to prepare the atmosphere, right? When someone, even like an ambush, when someone's going to kill somebody, the people that are conspiring, conspiring, prepare the atmosphere, right? When Jesus told um, Saint, uh, Peter, Peter, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, he's like, you're, you're about to enter an atmosphere, okay? Come on, share this as many times as you can. I want to pray for you. I'm leaving. Any questions or comments, I'm about to depart um, from this live. Like I said, this me speaking now, I'm speaking to the atmosphere of your house. But a lot of you, I'm speaking to your house now, and there's a shift in your atmosphere now as I'm speaking. There's deliverance of your atmosphere as His word is coming in. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we repent for atmospheres that we tolerated. Father, we repent for atmospheres that we allowed. Right now, in the book of Revelation, it says you tolerate the spirit of Jezebel. You tolerated her that called herself a prophet. What he was saying is you're tolerating that atmosphere that she brings. In the name of Jesus, I break the atmosphere. I break the atmosphere. Father, have mercy. I surrender to you. When you surrender to God, you bring the atmosphere of the, of the spirit of God. Father, right now, some of you got to open the windows of your house. Start opening the windows. Open windows and say, in the name of Jesus, right now, let the atmospheres be broken. In my house, I, I rebuke the atmosphere of violence. I rebuke the atmosphere of worry. I rebuke the atmosphere of loneliness. I rebuke the bondage right now. Come out. Say, come out of my atmosphere in the name of Jesus. You do not belong here. This is a kingdom house. Start worshiping God in the name of Jesus. We will not longer to we will no longer tolerate the atmospheres. Listen, I'm, even when you do deliverance in churches, you have to clean the atmosphere after deliverance. And deliverance ministers must know this because in the atmosphere, child pedophilia stays in there. Disease stay in there. That's what's important to clean out the atmosphere. You might be like, this religion is going on. No, I'm speaking about people that host revivals that they also even spoke about atmosphere changes, temperature changes. I speak in the name of Jesus. The climate in your house is changing. The temperature in your house is changing in the name of Jesus. Listen, millionaires, millionaires, multi-millionaires. Elon Musk carries a certain atmosphere. Trump, Donald Trump, former president, our president, Donald Trump carries the atmosphere. People and people carry, wealthy people carry wealthy atmospheres. People that are in poverty, they carry pov poverty atmospheres. In the name of Jesus, I call you out of that poverty poor atmosphere. That at you must break out of that atmosphere in the name of Jesus. That atmosphere is bringing seductive spirits of poverty, of poverty to your mind, of poverty to your body. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak an atmosphere of wealth, an atmosphere of success, that your body and your mind and your spirit become successful today in the name of Jesus. Yes, when you pray with flags, you shift the atmosphere. When you speak out loud, you, when, you, when you read the word of God, read it out loud. Shift the atmosphere when you read the word of God. Listen, have a, have a time with your family. I know one of the big atmosphere shifts are communion. Do communion with your family. It will bring healing on your family. If you do communion at least, listen, once a week. Communion should be done once a week with your family. It will shift the atmosphere. When you do the communion, the way we do it in Zion... The, it's not just a little paper. We actually prepare. We pray for the for the brothers. Have, listen, I, I would say, listen, in Zion, the communion, we give little bags to people for communion and have that communion prepared so people can take it to their houses. People can take the communion to their houses because communion shifts atmospheres. In the name of Jesus, communion. That's why the before um, Moses left uh, Egypt, they did the Passover, shifting atmospheres. Before Jesus got crucified, they did the communion because it shifts atmospheres. Communion always gets you ready for the next level, for the next breakthrough in your life, right? So I speak in the name of Jesus, start repenting now. In the country, said with the first news, repent, Father, for tolerating Jezebelic atmospheres, for, 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 for tolerating um, Abaddon, the spirit of Abaddon. Abaddon is a destroyer, Apollyon, destroyer atmospheres in our house. Father, we repent, Father, for allowing, Father God, sedu sedacious, Father God, seductive Sodom and Gomorrah atmospheres in our house. When, Lot, when, when, when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he was destroying an atmosphere because the atmosphere of Sodom and Gomorrah was really heavy. In the name of Jesus, I come over any, any infiltration, demonic infiltration, war, infiltration over your atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now that you will create an altar. We break down all demonic altars now, all demonic embargoes right now, all demonic, Father, sanctions let them be broken in the name of Jesus right now we break that and we create listen 
Create a prayer closet. If you want inbox me, send me a picture of your prayer room. Declare, say, I will do a little prayer. Not, not, it's not about religion, but there's got to be a time that, that when the enemy knows and your family knows that you're praying there, something is happening spiritually. Because listen, we operate from two dimensions. Listen to me. Is the kingdom of God in us, right? Just like, Pastor, you're talking about atmospheres. The kingdom of God is in us. Yes, but the kingdom of God in you allows the atmosphere of God outside of you to move, Right? So when the disciples are like, Jesus, should we call like fire from heaven? She's like, no, you don't know what you're saying. Don't do that. Right? They were tapping into the outer atmosphere from within. So the inner atmosphere of your temperature, the kingdom of God in you, because your body has a kingdom atmosphere, right? Inside of you. So there's atmospheres outside of you and there's atmospheres inside of you. Kingdom atmosphere will always influence, ex ex intrinsic atmospheres will always um, affect extrinsic atmospheres, right? Right, so it's people are like, no, no, you don't got to call the glory of God down because the glory of God is in you. Yes, but it works both ways. The glory of God is in you first. You activate that glory. Then it pulls, it pulls glory down. So you have people know it's not in you, it's outside. It's not outside, it's in you. It's both. It's in you and outside of you. It's, 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 it's in the essence. It's in the atmosphere. Okay? We are called to shift. Yes, breakthrough. And, and listen, we talk about Jeremiah chapter 110. You want to put that up, prophet? Um, plant. Uh, um, um, take down, uh, destroy, and plant. Uh, when you read Jeremiah one ten, that's atmosphere shifting. Listen, that's atmosphere shifting in its core. Jeremiah one ten, that is like a powerful verse for atmosphere shifting. And decree that over your house in the name of Jesus. So Heavenly Father, right now we repent, Lord. And now, right now, after we repent, you start anointing your house. You take dominion over your house. You address any person in your house that's carrying negative atmosphere. Listen, anyone in your house. Especially if you're the authority, they carry a negative atmosphere. You got to pray for them and you got to address them. You got to uproot them and say, "Listen, that atmosphere is not our culture here. We're not going to. You cannot tolerate certain atmospheres that are coming against the kingdom in your house, right? You can't allow disharmony in your house. You can't allow gossip in your house because gossip separates and divides, right? You got to. You got to have a conducive atmosphere in your house. You address them with love. You're not with violence. You assert them. We can't." We can't operate with this kind of atmosphere here. You're not going to bring that atmosphere in this place. And, and even when you get this in churches where people are like, oh, my old church used to do this. My old pastor, they're trying to bring their old atmosphere in where God is bringing them the new. An atmosphere is new wine. A new atmosphere is, so you're the new wine, but the atmosphere is new wineskins, right? So God will work the new in the new wineskins. The new wine goes in the new wineskins. When God puts you in a new atmosphere, you become the new, right? Amen. Share this with five more people. I got to go in the name of Jesus. So Heavenly Father, right now, we renounce anything in the atmosphere, all diabolical scheme, all conspiracy in the atmosphere, or watch this, all any premature death or murder in the atmosphere. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Murder in the atmosphere, we come after you in the name of Jesus. Seduction in the atmosphere, we come out you, we come out in the name of Jesus. Infection, disease, COVID in the atmosphere, COVID in the atmosphere, whatever monkey pox, whatever small pox, whatever little pox, Two pot, three pot in the house. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Recato robo shete de manso. Reman se kete de mansa. Amen. Powerful. Yes, that's confirmation woman of God. Right now. And now we bind whatever's in the atmosphere. Speak of the deliverance. Now we, we, we come against any satanic principality in the ethers, in the airway. We bind it. Now we speak. Father, we will cultivate altars. We speak joy in the atmosphere. We speak peace in the atmosphere. We speak love in the atmosphere. Start speaking the fruit of the Spirit to your atmosphere. Start, re start proclaiming revival in your atmosphere. Start proclaiming revival in your churches in the name of Jesus. Revival would not happen in your church if the atmosphere is not shifted. What do I mean? And it sucks to say, you can't really have a when, when we finish type situation. Because when, when the atmosphere changes... We can't be like, well, we got to be here out of like five or six o'clock because, because maybe that day, just for that one Sunday, God wanted you to go to nine o'clock just for, I'm not saying every Sunday, but that one Sunday, God wanted to extend the service, the length of service, right? He wanted to extend the length of service. So especially in apostolic ministries, we really got to be in places where we can allow God to just extend longer, right? I'm not, listen, some, you may have a one hour service sometime. That's okay. You can't even be religious in services. But, but you may have an hour and 30 minute service some Sundays. Listen, some Sundays you may have a 45 minute service. God's like, look, cut it short today and we're out. But some Sundays, God's like, no, this is going to be like a six hour, five hour walk. Whoever wants to leave, lead. But we're going to be crying in the altar because we're shifting atmospheres. The longer you stay in the presence prayer, the more you're shifting atmospheres. 
your law of accumulation, you're injecting, you're injecting atmosphere with your prophetic words, your prayer. Okay. So, Father, we speak. I prophesy that after tonight, your atmosphere will be churned forevermore. I prophesy that after tonight, you have the knowledge of atmospheres. You have the knowledge to speak over your atmospheres. After tonight, in the name of Jesus, you have the, the glory of God carries in the name of Jesus. The glory that you carry to shift the atmospheres. You carry a power to shift atmospheres today in the name of Jesus. Come on. I said that's when people carry talis, the Jewish people. They, they, they create an atmosphere with a tali. And I still pray with tali sometimes. I speak over your atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. I speak the holiness of God over your atmosphere. I speak the power of God over your atmosphere. I speak the kabbad. I speak healing over your atmosphere. I speak signs and wonders over your atmosphere. I speak the healing presence of God. I speak unusual measure of glory over your atmosphere. Reketamun satuma. Thank you for those that are sowing to me. Amen. For those that God is putting your heart to sow to me. Ask the Spirit of God, do you want me to sow into this man of God? You're sowing into my atmosphere. Come on, somebody. If you could post up, people are asking. Um, I'm getting inbox and emails. If, if you can post up my, my Zelle and my Cash App and, and keep on posting so people can catch it. Because some people are trying to screw up. And find it in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Share this. Share this. Share this. I speak a rapid change in your atmosphere. I flip the tables in your atmosphere. I whip out all religious spirit in your atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. All religiosity. All scheming. All backbiting. All spirit of betrayal in your atmosphere. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, yes, any atmosphere of this honor, of this honor, of this loyalty right now be broken in the name of Jesus. I break any dishonorable attitude, all characteristics of this honor. I speak an atmosphere of honor in the name of Jesus. I speak an atmosphere of honor in your ministry, in your house. Men of God, right now, take charge over your atmosphere. Prince in the household, men, kings in the household, take charge over your atmosphere. I prophesy. After today, in the next 24 hours, you are operating with a saturated atmosphere, a waterfall place filled with the word of God. Your atmosphere is filled with angels. Your atmosphere is filled with heaven. Right now, your atmosphere becomes the community of God where you will bump into angels. Where right now, Akai, the great witnesses are looking at you. Your atmosphere becomes the community of heaven. There's a bridge with your atmosphere in heaven in the name of Jesus. Where right now, you will have conversations, Akai, with the, with, 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 with the chosen beings. Reman Shokotobanse. Rip it, eradicate, burn, anything. I promise that there's a lady right now with a migraine. Woman of God, you're being healed. That, that's mind control. If that's you right now, I bind the mind control in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do what I was born to do. I bind that mind control in the name of Jesus. I take you out of right now. You got hurt in 1994. There was an accident in 1994. I speak you out of 1994 in the name of Jesus. That trauma that happened to you in 1994. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 2001 right now. I speak you out of 2001. There's a name by a lady by the name of Mercy. Mercy, mercy in the name of Jesus. Mercedes or mercy. God is changing your story. If you know her, tag her. God is changing your story in the name of Jesus. You, you, that you're wearing the blue shirt. There's a, you're wearing like a blue shirt today. God is healing you now. You're wearing a blue shirt. Woman of God, you have like blue on. God, that's you. This is for you. God is saying, I'm, I'm changing your atmosphere. I'm bringing an atmosphere of revival. I'm giving you, I'm bringing an atmosphere of wisdom. I'm bringing you an atmosphere of understanding in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name that worry is being flipped. I'm flipping the worry here. I'm flipping the anxiety here. I'm flipping the stress in the name of Jesus. I speak you out of the stressful atmosphere. I speak you out of the illusion, the delusion in the name of Jesus. I speak you out of the false doctrine. I speak you out of the, the, the poison atmosphere. That poisonous atmosphere. I speak you out of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. There we go. Blue is coming. Come on, speak it. That's you. Blue shirt. Hey. There we go. I'm hit a domino. In the name of Jesus. I speak to Miguel. Miguel, wherever you at. Miguel, in the name of Jesus. 
There was depression that hit you. You guys know Miguel, Michael, Miguel. And Miguel, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, I speak you out of that depression. I speak you out of that suicide. Suicidal thoughts must come out of you in the name of Jesus. Resurrection power will hit you as I'm speaking. As I'm speaking right now, resurrection power is hitting you. I prophesy to you with my eyes open. In the next three days, listen to me, in the next three days, there will be an intervention. In the next three days, God will, God will surprise you. Who is that? Janice's husband. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yes, bear, bear fruit when I'm speaking. This is the Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you. Why well, I speak the Miguel out in the name of Jesus. Hey, Kata, there's someone here, two people starting a ministry. God is saying, be, be, I'm not, and I'm, well, you want to use the word covering or overseer. God said, be, be connected with the man of God that can feed you. Be, listen, for those of you that are looking for covering spiritual fathers, I, I don't care how prophetic it is, make sure he doesn't carry an atmosphere of gossip. Make sure he doesn't carry an atmosphere of bigotry, of pride, in the name of Jesus. I break the atmosphere of pride. I break all vain atmosphere. I break, I, I bind all conceited atmosphere, in the name of Jesus. Yes, the migraine headache must go. Mind control must go right now. Pain, pain on your left knee, come out in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you got to speak out pain. Pain in the left knee, come out in the name of Jesus. Dolores, Dolores. Come out of that. Dolores, come out of that relationship. If that, I don't know the Dolores, God is calling her out of that relationship. Yes, I'm going to speak it. God is calling her out of that relationship. It's toxic in the name of Jesus. There's been domestic violence in there. God is speaking you out of there. There's been deception. There's been betrayal. God says, no more. You must close the chapter. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There we go. God is speaking. God is bearing witness. Mansoro, come on, share this. Someone got it here right now. Open the doors. There's, right now, there is there is a movement of God. There is a movement of God. Listen, it's nine o'clock. The prophetic started at nine o'clock. Remember, I told you about nine. There's something happening. As soon as it hit nine, I didn't time it. Nine, God started prophesying. They're releasing. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit started taking over at nine. But they kept it in. For those of you that are, 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 are you're, you're assigned to nine o'clock prayer, in the name of Jesus, right now, Brenda, be filled with God. Ashley, right now, do not tolerate that atmosphere. Break from that atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, I pray peace. I pray an atmosphere of abundance. I pray an atmosphere right now that is stress free. Some of you got to leave the workplaces that you're in. The workplace is creating a hostile atmosphere. All hostile atmosphere must go. All hostile atmosphere is it must go right now. Right now, the plethora of God of glory shall be your portion. Right now, another atmosphere is locating you. The the atmosphere of Zion, the atmosphere of Zoe life is speaking to you now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for those that are sending me cash apps. God is going to bless you in the name of Jesus. Because I'm, I'm, I'm imparting so much. I'm not charging you for this session. But God, right now, yes, I speak apostolic atmospheres. I speak prophetic atmospheres. And for when revival comes, we need evangelic atmospheres. Evangelic atmospheres for the people to minister that we send them on. And listen, if you send your church and make, and if you have 70 people in your church and make groups of 35 like Jesus and have them evangelize to regions, watch what God does with a team of 35. That's called apostolic strategy. I pray apostolic strategy in the name of Jesus. I pray fivefold. I pray the gifts of the Spirit in your atmosphere. I pray the gifts of the Spirit. I pray the offices of the of, of, of the five offices of the Spirit in in your life in the name of Jesus in your atmosphere. I pray apostolic order right now. All disorder. Some of you go to a house and your house has an atmosphere of disorder, of confusion, of instability. Right now, I pray stability in your atmosphere. I pray atmosphere of order. I pray atmosphere of right now. Any discombobulation in your atmosphere. Right now, I pray an atmosphere of clarity. I pray atmosphere of clarity in the name of Jesus. Julian, right now, receive the power of God. There's, there's three people on that you ask for another dimension in the spirit. God says, right now, I'm giving you the gift of prophecy. Right now, receive the gift of prophecy. Receive the gift of prophecy. Listen, he said, Israel, you're going to the land of milk and honey. Wells you didn't dig will be yours. Houses you didn't build will be yours. Reservoirs you didn't build will be yours. Listen, things that you didn't think were coming to you are coming to you now. Because the, the, even money and abundance are attracted to atmospheres. So if you're saying, man, nothing is happening to me. I'm attracting this kind of man in my life. Is the atmosphere you're carrying. Switch your atmosphere. Right now, I declare an emergency, urgent switch from atmospheres. Rapidly, right now, 
eject from that atmosphere, catapult from the atmosphere, run from the atmosphere. Even wretches Joseph, when Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him, he had to run out of the atmosphere. There's, there's some atmospheres, don't try to shift, you run out of that. Run out of, some of you got to run out of atmospheres. Come on someone, yes, 911, you got to be like Bolt, Hussein Bolt, and run out of that atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Right now, receive fresh impartation. Receive fresh manna from heaven in the name of Jesus. Well, team, my segment is off up tonight. Yes, atmospheres of discipline, atmospheres of self-control, the gifts of the Spirit, atmosphere watches of consistency. There's some atmospheres. Your mom was inconsistent. Your daddy, your great dad, never finished something, and you always operate under an atmosphere of inconsistency. Right now, I I pray an atmosphere of a, a stable. You church to church. You don't even you don't, you don't, listen. God has blessed you, and. The man of God prophesied that blessing. You don't even call him back to thank him. Be like, hey, man of God, thank you for remember that prophecy. You don't even sow back to, to the man of God. You don't remember that. Listen, not remembering what the man of God has done and said about you and prophesied is demonic. There's an atmosphere of amnesia. I speak you out of the atmosphere of amnesia that you start remembering the prayers and the intercessions the man of God had conducted. Come on, share this as many times as you can. Share this one person before I leave. An atmosphere of consistency. I break you out of all atmosphere of legalis- le- um, all legalistic atmospheres, all religious atmospheres. Come out in the name of all legalism. Come out of legalism. Yes, yeah, listen. Re- atmospheres of religion are what stop major move of God. Listen, it was the, the atmosphere of religion that killed Jesus, not the Roman Empire. It was the Sadducees, the Sa- the Pharisees, all the all the C's, the E's. Amen. Thank you, thank you for those of you. That sold to me. I want to pray a special blessing. Those of you that sold, for those of you, and, and if you, some of you sold with your time, you can't sold today, sold another time. But for those of you that sold to me tonight and believed in this atmosphere and believe in the atmosphere I'm, I'm, I'm birthing today, the Spirit of God told me you're going to break the Western bubble. You're going to pop it in the name of Jesus. I believe it. I believe that this community, South Florida, if you're from New York, that's fine, but South Florida, we are under a very conducive atmosphere for the glory and revival. We're in divine alignment. We're in recalibration. We are calibrated to revival. Come on, somebody. I prophesy more prayer services. I prophesy more prayer conferences. I prophesy more fasting services. I prophesy right now more, 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 more night services. I prophesy more visuals. I prophesy more, more closed, uh, uh, I was it, shut-in services in the name of Jesus. Reban Soku, yes, an atmosphere of forbearance, an atmosphere of faithfulness, an atmosphere of self control, an atmosphere of gentleness. Come on, Simon. The atmosphere of the flesh is weary, strife. Mm. Yes. I'm out of here. Um, I'm closing. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to share this with the people of God tonight. Come on. If, if you're here, put your thumb in the middle. The thumb represents the apostolic. Put the apostolic thumb. Hey, when you grab the prophetic, put it both here. The apple side of the prophetic right now. In the middle of your forehead. And I decree. Something is transferring to you. A power is transferring to you right now. The apostolic and prophetic. Put it here. In the name of Jesus. You will tap into new dimensions. You will tap into the technology of heaven now. Receive it. Receive it. Put it on your head. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In self-impartation. In part. Blessings, blessings. I love y'all. I know you guys asked me to be more online. And I said, I gotta do it today. Well, I'm out of here. I salute you. Share this as many times as you can. Share it with somebody. And for those that are catching me in the rebound, I salute you. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you with my time. I'm here to serve you right now. I, I, and I speak atmospheres of holiness. I speak atmospheres of consecration. I speak atmospheres right now of transparency. Yes. I bless you. Catch me. Oh, this Friday, this Friday, <clears throat> we're going to have youth night. Um, yes, we're going to watch a movie, but there's going to be impartation after the movie as well. Invite your youth. If you're visiting, come youth night. I believe, right, Lisette? Confirm if it's this Friday. This Friday, we have youth service for Zion. God bless you. Gibson, let, let, let all your sons and daughters know um, there's um, youth night this Sunday. And we're going to create an atmosphere there. Amen. 
Yeah, it's not just watching the movie after the movie. It's going to be the presence of God, impartation. We don't just isolate it. Yes, it's this Friday. Uh, Deaconess Maria is going to be there. Pastora is going to be there. So they're going to watch a, a movie, but it's a trap. It's a movie, and then the glory is coming right after. <laughs> Amen. There will be impartation. Yes, we'll do. And it's not just for you. If anybody can show up. Anybody can show up in the name of Jesus. I may even be there. I may do a special invitation. Thank you. I receive it. I receive more impartation. More open heavens to me. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Blessings.